Uh, hello, uh, Bowman. Uh, am I audible? Yes, a little bit loud would be great. Yeah, fine. So, uh, uh, welcome to the 25th edition of uh, International Film Festival of Kerala. Thank you. Uh, it's a wonderful film, The Names of the Flowers, which is part of the competition section of uh, IFSK this year. Uh, this year, due to this COVID situation, we are not able to actually physically meet and celebrate the festival. But I think uh, we have to resort to these online means to communicate with each other. Uh, but very glad that this film is part of IFSK Forum. Because uh, Che Guevara is actually a, a legend all over the world. And you know, he is actually iconized, mythologized uh, in Kerala too. Like he appears in various forms and he's part of political protest movements and all that. Mm -hmm. So a film about him, he, he rouses a lot of interest. A lot of people really love to see this film. So this film is actually, you know, very interesting kind of film. And you know, this film is kind of about uh, the stuff legends and myths are made of in a way. Like how mm -hmm. myths are made, how legends are made of. Looked at that way, it is a kind of universal kind of story uh, about history and memory and the ways in which individuals, societies, and states remember, historicize, mythologize, and memorialize. This film is about a phenomenon called um, memory and history and how certain memories become history and others are excluded or disallowed or banned or kept away. Mm -hmm. So about again, about how personal memories and public histories are meshed, woven together, woven into each other. So I, I think I found this film very fascinating in the way how you know, a, a person's memory becomes part of history, where she becomes, she views herself into the web of history as it were. Mm -hmm. So a very enigmatic kind of a story and a very magical way in which uh, the narrative is picturized uh, through these vast, desolate landscapes, the daily journey of Julia, the old woman, and the mentally challenged man who accompanies her, her adamant and persistent efforts to relive and assert her memory and all that. Uh, again, it's a kind of, you know, uh, this is a, as I said, there's a conflict between official history and the memories of people. It could the film could be read like that. So I would start off with this question: Is it actually based on a real life story? Great uh, introduction. Sure. Yes, it is uh, based on. Uh, that's how I came across the story in, in the first place because it is based on, I mean, the character, so to speak, uh, of the protagonist of the film is based on an individual named Julia Cortez, who is a retired teacher living in a Bolivian village, in the village where Che Guevara was killed. And well, she exactly of making him a soup, you know, hours before his death and having almost the last conversations of his life, uh, you know, with her and so on. Well, Naturally, there are a great deal of dramatic, uh, basically, information and layers that, that are added to the, to the character and to the story. But the main idea, if you may, comes directly from Julia Cortez. That's right. Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what was the kind of inspiration behind the story? Was it, you know, your, uh, uh, you know, knowledge about this character Julia Cortez, or you know, were, were you working on this theme uh, otherwise? You know, making a film is always meeting of very different aspects and ideas and layers. So, on one hand, it might be directly the, uh, you know, getting to know this person Julia Cortez through a piece of article that was published in it in a newspaper in England. And then on the other hand, I might have had my own ideas, et cetera. So at the same time, I mean, simultaneously, these, these few ideas come together and you decide making a film as such. But in this precise case, uh, I would say, you know, uh, I, I had certain ideas before of, uh, you know, of 
basically a historical context, you know, where history turns into memory and all those uh, basic introductions that you brought up. And what I basically learned about the story of the death of Che Guevara in Bolivia, I found it a nice uh, context where I could e exercise those earlier interests that I had in that precise dramatic context. In the, uh, the narrative structure of the film is actually not a linear one. Nothing actually happens. Kind of, you know, it doesn't follow a kind of linear uh, narrative format. It, turns a kind of, it, it is more of a kind of creating you, two images. You are creating a kind of very dreamy, fantasy kind of atmosphere. In these long uh, shots of war, the landscapes, uh, very human faces. Uh, human faces are very important, I thought. The bare interiors, the repetition of Julia's walk to the school with the flowers, the flower pot on the windowsill, and you have you know constructed your film by using such imagery and creating a kind of a kind of different kind of world where memory is more important than reality. Is it so? Like, what was the kind of uh, what was your thought process behind creating this atmosphere? You know, every film, I think, uh, finds its language in a very evolutionary way. I mean, especially in the uh, method that I work with this film, <clears throat> many exterior scenes, there are not too many interior scenes, and, uh, you know, the, the environmental context, that whole geography, that whole natural landscapes and so on. In a way, sometimes the idea dictates itself, you know, uh, and, and leads you to, uh, to the right form and language. And it happened to be with this film as well. Naturally, because it wasn't my country or it wasn't the country where I was introduced to before, you go there with certain ideas at, at times with certain illusions, with certain images in mind. But then what I call this process is meeting halfway with reality, with real characters, with real places and so on. So uh, uh, filmmaking as such is always meeting halfway with that, uh, with that reality, as I said. And therefore the form and the language of the film is born somewhere in between, you know? There are certain ideas that are yours, certain ideas comes from the environment and so on. And this goes with everything. It goes with characterization, it goes with the, uh, with the cinematic language and so on. Uh, they said she is a, a legend throughout the world no? and he has been absorbed uh, and adapted into uh, various cultures and political imaginations in different ways. Mm -hmm. How do you actually personally relate to she and his legacy? For you, uh, you see more of a legend or a real person who was hunted down and shot dead in that uh, desolate school. How do you actually relate to she as a historical person? You know, it's very interesting, regardless of how your own ideas are about Che Guevara, either you're a pro Che Guevara person or an anti Che Guevara person and so on. Once you get to Bolivia, you become introduced to a very uh, different context in a way that Bolivians themselves, they have very mixed feelings about this man. Some, you know, with more sympathy towards left of course, praise him, and uh, and so the government of Bolivia, the government of Evo Morales, praised him for years, and they, you know, created museums of the man in in close to the place where he died, and so on. And many other uh, Bolivians who don't have such ideas, they simply find a man more or less, uh, you know, dangerous, rather no and a man who came to invade uh, the, their, their country politically and so on, you know? And so there are just so many different Che Guevara there. And then there is this Che Guevara as a mythological figure, as I mentioned, who is rather worshiped by some, by some locals there. You know, as I mentioned, they, they saw some biblical image in the man. And so he was elevated to level of this, uh, basically religious mythology and so on. Uh, my own tendency was rather not to, uh, you know, not to dictate anything uh, from my own, basically, perspective and just be observant 
and try to learn from these different versions of Che Guevara that I met cr across the way. And I had few other versions also observed in, in Cuba as well. It wasn't only Bol Bolivia. It was in Miami, it was in Cuba, it was in Bolivia and so on. And so the, the, the image of Che Guevara that uh, basically is, is built in the film is rather uh, an outcome of all these different uh, layers of the man and his mythology that I, that I learned about through years. Sorry, I can't hear you again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, uh, the film is also a kind of, you know, Julia's attempt, a person's, an individual's attempt to make history part of her life. You know? uh, he, she personalizes a public legend in a way or inscribing herself into a real event in history. But actually her efforts are actually aborted or foiled by others and by the state. State has a different kind of version of history and about memory and all that. So are you actually talking about who owns memory and who writes history and about how personal memories, feelings and dreams are lost in the larger history? What is your take on that? I mean, a film should, should ideally speak for its own. So I'm not going to add really comment on that. But as I mentioned, look, what I was interested in was this clash of the narratives, as you're putting, right? There is the narrative of the government, and the government has its own purpose for that narrative. You know, they celebrate that figure and his 50th year's anniversary of death for certain political agenda and so on. And then there is that tiny individual who happens to be the protagonist of the film, whose name is Julia Cortez, that teacher, and then so on and so on. So basically every uh, individual or institution around the, uh, the, you know, that name around Che Guevara is being uh, basically benefited in different ways. And uh, this is again, uh, these are uh, ideas coming directly from reality and how, how uh, things were in Che Guevara. The, tourism, that so-called so historical and cultural tourism that was built around the man was at the end of the day very helpful to the villagers, to the storytellers, and there are still thousands of tourists every year going to that village of La Higuera and Bairande to, you know, enter the school where he was shot and to take photos of the laundry room of that hospital where he's uh, basically dead body was exhibited and so on. So there is a still a sense of Che Guevara tourism. Then there is the government and so on. And I just, uh, you know, was interested in the way that these narratives at times, they basically, they clash each other and so on. Uh, again, like the image of uh, Che Guevara's, you know, dead body lying on that uh, bench. You know, we actually have it from uh, Fernando Solana's film. Hour of the Furnaces, where you see when you, the, the film ends with the shot of Che Guevara uh, lying dead, no, right? shot dead. Is it the same place or, you know, uh, where you shot? Uh, no. Something interesting is that Che Guevara was arrested and killed in the province of Santa Cruz, where the whole guerrilla fight was going on and so on. And I... Uh, shot the film in Bolivian highlands close to La Paz. So there is a, you know, big uh, change of location in the film. And that by itself, you know, was a rather difficult decision to make. And at the end of the day, I thought that we have a sense of dramatic permission because it's a fiction film at the end of the day, it's not a documentary. And then, uh, yes, using the dramatic permission, we, we decided to basically shoot the film in a different environment. Also the people who act in the film, are they professional actors or people from the village? They're all uh, non-actors. There are, uh, I believe, two uh, professional Bolivian actors in the film. Jorge Hidalgo and then uh, Nelson Nelson Torres. Uh, these these two are professional actors, but apart them, everyone basically is non-actors. Uh, 
in a sense that it's, it's their first time being in front of the camera. Uh, and also, you are from Iran, right? That's right. Yeah, and you, I think you live in Canada. Mm -hmm. And you know, this film was shot in Bolivia. So how, what was the experience like for an Iranian who lives in Canada, making a film in Bolivia? What was it like? It would be interesting for our viewers to share their experience of you know, finding the location and you know, get the feel of the landscape and you know, That's taking really the much. I mean, I, I, I feel home. When I, when I work in a film, uh, regardless of where it is, I feel home because uh, you know, that's, that's the language that we speak and the, the film itself and that cinematic language and so on is my main focus. I try not to get distracted by, you know, the new environment that I step in or nor to get to, to uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I believe the term would be distracted by ideas and by, by things that, you know, might be at first uh, seeming very interesting and very charming and so on. But at the end of the day, it might not be coming directly from, from you know, that, that film itself. So I, I try to, you know, create a frame for myself, stay focused in the frame and whatever I found interesting in the environment, try to translate it into that frame at the end of the day. So, uh, and in, in Bolivia also, I've, I felt at home, people are wonderful, you know, very welcoming, very warm people. And I spent quite a few years there. I got to, uh, you know, learn more about the culture and the, uh, and in the environment, and yes, it was a it was a very, uh, you know, personally speaking, it was a very good uh, and pleasant experience. Also, the process of how you went about it, like the kind of you know the narrative structure that you follow, and all the visual imagery uh, that you have in the film, uh, do, you, do you script beforehand and then go to uh, the locations and you know. Uh, you had a script in mind in you know before you shot the film, or a lot of things happened there, improvised there. Yes, as I mentioned, look, you, you always have certain ideas, especially about the place you've never been to, right? And then by the time you, you arrive there, you start uh, you know adjusting your ideas to the environment, you start changing ideas and so on. So it's neither this nor that. It's neither an entire act of improvisation nor an entire act of dictation of what I have in mind onto that space. As I mentioned, uh, I'm borrowing this term by the book from Gilles Deleuze, that French, uh, basically, uh, philosopher, meeting halfway, you know, telling, telling uh, stories with that nature that is neither too personal, is neither entirely from you know, your own personal basically means, nor it's an anthropological imagery entirely. So it's in a way meeting halfway with reality. Your ideas and, and, and the reality, they basically complement each other. And this uh, process of filmmaking was applied in, in Bolivia, this Bolivian film as well. Yeah, I think, Joey, yeah, uh, because the film as such is imagery and the weight you know, takes the narrative forward is open in nature, so that the the uh, viewers have a lot of space to relate to and think and you know imagine. That is the way in which the film has been structured, which, is, which I think is very fascinating. Uh, it's also in your first film, right? That's my first uh, fiction film, feature fiction film. Actually. Okay, so what is, what is what is your personal background from? Did you study filmmaking and then? Well, I started acting as a child actor back in Iran, and then uh, I, I left uh, the, uh, the whole acting world, and I was working as a film critic in, in newspapers for a while, and journals, film journals, and so on. And then I had a few short films made in Iran as well. And then uh, by the time I left Iran for Canada, I tried to basically keep my focus only on one field, that uh, happened to be cinema. Uh, and I understand the film has been, has gone around to a lot of festivals. Uh, how was it received actually? And how was it uh, received in international festivals? 
I mean, uh, generally speaking, I, I, I'm very happy with the film that the, uh, with the way that the film was received and the, the audience liked the film. The film won a couple of audience awards and so on. Very interesting, but uh, I was curious to see how would film, you know, how would film work in a few countries like China, for instance, and, and even in India and so on. And uh, I was surprised by the way that how the Chinese audience, for instance, welcomed the film or the audience in Brazil and so on. So at the end of the day, there are a few countries where the film just, uh, you know, connects apparently stronger with the audience. And that got me really interested. I had that, that experience, as I mentioned, with Brazil and with China. Yeah, I think that is very interesting, actually, because people relate to Shea in different ways, you know, uh, connected to their own political histories and all that. So oh, was it shown in Bolivia? Sorry, say it again. Uh, was it uh, shown in Bolivia? No, not yet. Because of the, the whole, uh, you know, pandemics, we haven't had the chance to have our Bolivian premiere. So hopefully this year. I, I'm sure that this film will be loud here, actually. People will like it because Shea has been in uh, in the public imagination and imagery uh, in Kerala uh, in many ways. So I think it will be loved by people here. So uh, Excellent. I hope thank so. you for this uh, conversation. And also tell us about your current project. What are you working on now? Yes, I'm working again on a... <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned... Uh, uh, not to you, but earlier here and there that I was interested in making a sort of a trilogy about 20th century and so on. And so this Che Guevara film happened to be a film in that trilogy. I'm working on another uh, film again with a 20th century theme in it and just in the script writing process right now. Okay, thank you, Herman for being with us and also taking part in IFFK. Uh, looking forward to more films from you and also uh, maybe next time you'll be in IFFK personally. I hope so. Thank you very much and enjoy the film. Okay, thank you. I'm sure that will be enjoyed here and you know, appreciated. Well. We'll, Excellent. We know about Excellent. Uh, the comments of people and the response to the film. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.